Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be working out this problem. For the first part, we are going to find the first five terms of the Maclaurin series represented by this function right here, f of x. So instead of creating the Maclaurin series from scratch, which you can do, but we're actually going to use a formula to help us. So we know that the Maclaurin series for e to the x, so we know this, that e to the x center at zero can be represented as the sum starting from zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Now, since our function is f of x uh, equals e to some power, so I'm going to replace that power right here, and then that will be our Maclaurin series representation of e to the negative x to the fourth. So check this out. So for the first part, e to the negative x to the fourth is going to be the sum starting from n equals zero <clears throat> to infinity of some x to the n over n factorial. And the x we're going to replace will be the exponent of e, that's negative x to the fourth. And then we simply simplify that. So this will be the sum starting from n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n by using laws of exponents. And then if you have x to the fourth to the n power, that's just x to the four n. So I can write this as times x to the four n all over n factorial. So that is our Maclaurin series for this. We're going to be write down the first five terms. So we'll let n run until we get five terms. So when n equals zero, cause that's your starting. So this is for the term when n is equal to zero. When n equals zero, these guys are zero, so you'll have uh, pretty much one for the first term. So we'll have one as our first term. And then when n equals one, you're going to have a negative one times x to the power four over one factorial. And then when n equals two, you're going to get positive because negative one to the second power is positive one. Positive one times x to the four times two, that'll be eight over n factorial, so that's 2. And the next term will be negative, so this is n equals 3. Negative 1 times x to the power 4 times 3, so that would be x to the 12 over n factorial, that's 3 factorial. So I got four terms, I need one more. And then the next term will be plus, because n is even. 1 times um, x to the 4 times 4, so that's x to the 16 over four factorial. The next term will be positive and just keep on going plus minus and so on. All right, so let's clear this up so we have our first five terms written nicely. So the first five terms is one minus x to the fourth because one factorial is one plus uh, x to the eighth over two factorial. You can write that as a two. I'm just gonna keep it in two factorial form. Minus x to the 12 over three factorial. Again, you can expand three factorial, but I think this is good enough, plus x to the 16 over four factorial minus and so on. So these are the first five terms of this um, Maclaurin series. For the second part, we're going to take our answer to the first part, which is right up here. So this was the formula. This is the closed form, and then these are the expanded terms. So we're going to take that because that's our f of x and we're going to integrate from zero to one half. And we're also going to try to approximate that integral with an error less than or equal to 0 0.001. So we'll see how it closes our approximation once we um, write out some of the terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So I am going to integrate zero to one half of f of x respect to x. So this will be the integral from zero to one half of f of x. Well, f of x is this guy right here. So we're expressing it as an infinite sum because it's a non-elementary function. We don't really have a technique to integrate this. So we're gonna use the series answer. So this will be the infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x to the four n over n factorial dx. Now you could place in this expanded form and integrate term by term, but that's not so sufficient. It's easy to uh, just integrate the formula and you'll have a nice closed formula after you integrate and then you write out the terms. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
Now, assuming convergence, of course, e to the x converges everywhere, so this will also converge. So we can actually push the sum outside and integrate where we have the x variable. So you can integrate from 0 to 1 half of, so negative 1 to the n over n factorial. Those are just constant. So we're really just integrating x to the power of 4n dx. So using the power rule of integration here, so if you recall from um, probably calculus 1, if you're integrating x to the n dx, assuming n is not negative 1, this is equal to x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Of course, we're doing definites. We'll evaluate it at the endpoints. So using that idea, I'm going to add 1 to the power, same power go on the bottom. So this will be the sum starting from 0 to infinity. Keep carrying out your constants. So you'll have x to the, let's write it like this since we'll have a fraction x to the 4n, add 1 to the power, same power goes on the bottom, 4n plus 1. And we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 1 half because it's a definite integral we're trying to approximate. Now let's go ahead and plug in the upper limit of integration, which is 1 half into x. So this would give us the sum starting from 0 to infinity. So all of these are constants. Write them out where the integration, these were all constants, but here they're gonna vary depending on what n is. So when I put in x one half, so you'll have one half to the power four n plus one minus, now when I plug in the lower limit of integration, which is zero in here, it's just gonna be zero over four n plus one times n factorial. They're just gonna go to zero. So you don't have to write that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, simplify this a little bit more on the denominator and the numerator. So if you have one half, uh, let's say this is negative one to the n over n factorial times four n plus one. If I have this to the power four n plus one, this is the same thing as writing negative one to the n times one to the four n plus one over n factorial times four n plus one times two to the power of 4n plus 1. So this is our 1 half to the same power. So that's what I'm going to replace here. Just a lot of algebraic simplification. Sum starting from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. Now 1 to the any power, it's always 1, so we don't have to write that. On the denominator, you'll have n factorial times 4n plus 1 times 2 to the power of 4n plus 1. So that's what this comes out to be. Now let's write us on the term and we're going to approximate this sum. So this is equal to, so when n equals zero, you're going to get um, n equals zero. So on top, we'll have one on the denominator. This will go to uh, one. So you'll have zero factorial, that's one. Four n, so that's four times zero plus one. So you'll have one and then two to the power of Four and that's zero plus one, that's two to the power of one. So it's just two. And then when n equals one, you're going to get the following term. So when n equals one, well, on the numerator, we're going to get a negative one. So let's put a minus one here. On the denominator, you'll have one factorial times four times one plus one, that's five. And then two to the power of four and plus one, that's five. So two to the fifth. And then let's go for one more term. So plus, this is for n equals 2. So you'll have a positive 1 on top. And then the denominator, you'll have 2 factorial, that's 2. 4 times 2, that's 8 plus 1, that's 9. Times 2 to the power of 9. And then the next term will be negative 1 over so on. Down the, look, one, one, one more term. So n equals 3. So uh, like I said, on numerator, it's going to be negative. Now on the denominator, you'll have uh, 3 factorial times, um, so 4 times 3, so that's 12 plus 1, that's 13, times 2 to the power of 13. All right, and then just keep on going. So we want to approximate this. Now, since these terms are alternating, we can use the alternating series estimation theorem, which says that this can be approximated, the sum 
is approximated through this formula. So we know that the error, the approximated value, it's gonna have an error less than a sub n plus one term. So we wanna look into our expanded sum, which is this right here, and see which one of these satisfies the error we want. So we want our sum to have an error less than or equal to 0 0.001. So we want the error to be less than 0 0.00. Oh, forget how many zeros I said. Two zeros, okay. 0 0.001, which is equivalent to one over a thousand. So you look through your uh, sum of the terms, and once you hit the term that is less than one over a thousand, you sum up everything before that. So um, let's go ahead and write this out. So hold on to this. This is for the alternating series estimation theorem tells us. So if I write out these guys one more time in a simplified form, this is one half minus one over five times two to the fifth, that's 32, plus one over nine times two to the 10th. So I'm combining these powers right here. And then the next term we expanded was one over uh, three factorial, that's six times 13 times two to the 13 plus so on. Now let's check this out. So if I sum up, um, so one half, that's 0.5. This one right here, this is about uh, five times 32. So that's about 160, one over 160. And that is greater than one over a thousand. So we're gonna have to go to next term. So this one right here, this is going to be uh, one over nine times two to the 10th power. And that term is actually less than one over a thousand. So check, we found the term we wanted. So we're gonna sum up only these terms right here. So only these ones. So this sum will have an error within the accuracy we want about 0 0.001. So let's go ahead and add them up. So our integral is approximately this integral from zero to one half of e to the negative x to the fourth is approximately one half minus one over 160, which is about, um, once you put them in common denominators, this is 79 over 160 with an error of 0 0.001. All right, so I hope this helps. Take care.